So on July 29th, AMD confirmed the pricing and how they will market the performance of the 6600 XT. And this was something that, well, the price specifically had been rumored, I don't know, for weeks now. You know, I had first uh, leaked that $400 was something that AMD was at least telling people they were considering, although the entire time I thought there's no way it will be 400 This is them taking advantage of the fact that they know that within their company this will be leaked and they can gauge, you know, the feedback, which of course was negative. Um, I knew that the highest they would go the whole time was 379 uh, which I confirmed in another video after that, but I was honestly kind of assuming they would go... Closer to 350, to be honest, you know, closer to like a 20 to 25 percent increase over what the 5600 XT costs, just like the 6700 XT costs 20 percent more than the 5700 XT, which is unfortunate. The original price point of the 6700 XT was it was around 399 to 429, and the original planned price point of the 6600 XT, as I confirmed, I mean, last year, was closer to 300 or 330, but I don't know, some level of price increase is expected given the current market, rising GDR6 prices, but yeah, I gotta be honest, 380 is, is, a, is a bit ridiculous, and well, what, what I want to talk about, though, besides just the obvious of pointing out that it's $20 less than the 3060 Ti, just like the 6700 XT was $20 less than the 3070, is that, you know, this is kind of the logical conclusion of the gaming desktop market, this price point. Let's all remember that the original GTX Titan launched at $1,000, and NVIDIA couldn't keep this cut-down die at an egregious price point in stock. And... Well, I think right since then, NVIDIA was sure that they could just keep pushing up prices as long as they at least were trading blows with the top crown. And look, there's been many other offenders before the Titan and after, but another one that I want to point out besides the OG Titan, which I feel was really the biggest factor in NVIDIA feeling confident in increasing prices, is the 2080 Ti, which, yeah, I know that gamers complained about Turing prices on Reddit, but as far as we can tell, most people complained went into a store and paid over $1,200 for these unreliable cards nonetheless, which, I mean, I don't really understand, honestly, why people were calling NVIDIA greedy with the 3080 Ti. I just thought it was stupid that, you know, if MSRP is a joke, just make it $1,000 so you're at least directly competing with the 6900 XT, but it wasn't greedy. No more greedy than they were with the 2080 Ti that everyone was okay with costing $1,200. So... There's a long lineage of the top cut down card costing at least over a thousand or even just if you adjust for inflation now twelve hundred. It wasn't the thirty eighty Ti first, there was the twenty eighty Ti and Titans before it. And so I think a lot of us were hoping that and I've seen this in comments and forums a lot, that Oh, you know, NVIDIA can price their very top card and even second top card as high as they want. As long as they keep the mid-range and the low end at the current prices, no one really cares. Let the rich waste their money. And I was, you know, sympathetic to that argument for a while. But it's time to just accept that if the top end card is $1,200, then over time, AMD and NVIDIA's goal will be to bring those cards that are around one-third to half the performance, you know, up to closer to a third of that price, which is what AMD is doing with the 6600 XT. I just think it's time for us to understand that while there was all of this talk during the, I don't know, you maybe call it the Polaris, the RX 480 era, that AMD only had to service the mid-range, that going for the crown wasn't worth it, is been proven incorrect. That there is a reason NVIDIA wants to hold the top crown, and it's because if they can command the crown, then they can command higher prices on that, and then over time they can jack up the prices on everything below it. If no one votes with their wallets that increasing prices is the wrong thing, and people are voting with their wallets that you should increase prices, and now we can see that it will affect the low end, and like I said in a recent video, AMD and NVIDIA are openly discussing internally, you know, at what point can we get the, you know, maybe the 7500 XT from AMD to 400 so we can stop selling below it, so we can just have people buy used cards if they want a below $400 graphics card, and, and NVIDIA's been very much so trying to do the same. So yeah, that's one of my main thoughts here after seeing the confirmation of that price that I leaked. 
of the 6600 XT that this is just the logical conclusion. People bought the Titan for 1,000, they bought 80 Ti's for 1,200, and so if this continues, the low end will just become 400, that it's not safe. But I do also want to be clear here that my point isn't that AMD gets a free pass because NVIDIA was mean first or something. I mean, the 6600 XT is hilariously horrible value with an almost anti-consumer reveal. You know, a lot of people I talked to, you know, tech tubers and such weren't getting very detailed press decks beforehand. And the press wasn't really invited based on what I'm told. The EU and the uh, U.S. press wasn't really invited to take part in this reveal in any way, really, compared to previous launches. And that's because AMD doesn't want to involve the press on this. They know it's it's pretty slimy what's going on. And it's hilarious, actually, to me that they compare it to the, the GTX 1060. I mean, yeah, it looks like a bargain compared to a five-year-old $300 card, but that's basically all AMD can do to justify a lower mid-range, at best, really low-end card costing this much, which, by the way, let us also point out that I guess pricing this at 380 means AMD doesn't care about most of the market. Well, except that they do, and they just want most of the market to accept far higher prices now. They would want the Polaris people to just accept Polaris prices are never coming back. And Acting like it's impressive beating the 3060 is hilarious to me as well. It's a 15% stronger card for about 15% more money, and it has less RAM. I mean, then again, though, let's be honest. The 3060 isn't going to be 339 anytime soon, as I confirmed in one of my recent videos. Um, they're going to supply more of them, but the GDR6 costs have more than doubled. The 3060, make no mistake, is a... $400 or more card for the overwhelming majority of the volume, probably for all of the 3060's life moving forward. And so if you really think about it, AMD didn't price the 6600 XT really against the MSRP, which is fake really, of the 3060 Ti. They priced it against what they know the street prices of the 3060 are likely to be long-term. That long-term, the 3060 is going to be a $400 plus card, and that most of the other cards will be at least 10-20% above MSRP. And so the 6600 XT, even with current demand and rising GDR6 prices, is at an MSRP where if it's around or slightly above that, it'll make AMD good profits for the foreseeable future. And that's, you know, why they also then aren't selling it from their website, not making a reference model with one contact of mine telling him that AMD literally said to him that it's for presentation purposes only when he really pushed for it, that he was told basically that, you know, it, oh, so you are producing a reference model. And AMD basically said, no, we're not producing a reference model, but we might send you one, <laughs> meaning the run of those reference cards was really, really like really not being produced. And that's because AMD wants AIBs to fully be able to price their cards wherever they want to until supply catches up with demand. And they don't want any anchor from their website encouraging lower prices until the market, us gamers, decide that we won't pay these prices anymore. Or simply, all of us have gotten our overpriced cards and we're done shopping at these prices. My conclusion simply is that the 6600 XT Something people should think about is how it's really, in effect, priced against its real competitor, the 3060's street price, and that this is AMD's reaction to not just recent pricing and demand and market uh, shenanigans, but also just the logical conclusion of what happens when you allow the high end to cost twice as much as it should. If you allow the high end to cost twice as much as it should, then slowly over time, NVIDIA and AMD, because they're not a charity anymore, will just slowly increase the price of the mid-range to be in the same price performance plat you know, uh, line as the high end. And then as the mid-range hits that same line, you know, the previously sub $300 market is not safe. We can now completely and confidently say that it is not safe if the high end gets expensive. The mid range will become more expensive and then the low end will. And if that does, like I said in a recent video, AMD and Nvidia will try to make sure that low end just isn't a thing anymore for new cards. And that's about it. That's all I have to say for this video. There's nothing else I really have to add. I thought, you know, I was really thinking about this while on vacation, so I did want to take some time 
uh, a way to put this video together at the last minute one morning. And so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did remember to subscribe to Moore's Law is Dead, uh, ring the bell button and share these videos. And, you know, a new die shrink came out only to patrons today as well. So remember that that's there if you support us. And we really do need your uh, support for me, Dan Gerard, the entire team that we're trying to build up to keep the quality going up and consistently coming out even when I'm on vacation. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching.